Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. I can't wait for you to see what I'm up to this week. It is Monday morning, the kids are about to come in, so I hope you enjoy what I got. Okay, so I barely got to talk to you guys today because I was just so busy, but honestly today was a really, really good day. And <laughs> I think part of that is because I have such an active class and I decided to embrace that today and um what oh my goodness <laughs> um sorry I decided to embrace that today and I, I think it really helped obviously I can't um take kids outside every single day and do active stuff every single day today was like a very specific day that I could do that but it was great um, they are doing these things on their bodies, and, uh, I don't have the sheet, but there's this one, and it has, like, the brain, so they write about the brain, and then there's another packet of information, and it just talks about the brain and things like that. It looks like this one is from Kiki's Classroom, um... So I'm sure you can find that somewhere online or TPT. The other one is, obviously I don't wanna show you everything from that, but, oh, this one is a packet, a pretty big one, and it's called Our Amazing Human Body. Read about it, and also from Kiki's Classroom. So um, if I can find the link, I'll put it below. But basically, it just has a little bit of information. And so I put up on the board what the kids needed to do. So part of it was reading about the brain. And then they, um, we cut out our bodies last week. I told you guys a little bit about that. I just pulled long sheets of paper. And then the kids laid down on them and traced a partner out. And then we switched. So Monday, they traced one partner. Tuesday, they traced a second partner. Um, Wednesday, they cut out their bodies and some hung them up. And then Thursday, everybody got theirs hung up. So now on the bodies, we put a brain and different parts of the body to learn about them. And I told them that in the fifth grade class, whoops, in the fifth grade class, um, when I was in there, their job was to get the information and then they kind of just went off and they did it. And I said, this is really good practice. So I was kind of giving them that practice a little bit and saying like, you have to be responsible to get that stuff done. Um, we have the opportunity to have a little free time on the Chromebooks on Friday. So I'm kind of saying like, hey, I'm giving you this time in class to get this stuff done. And if you choose not to get it done, then you're going to have to do it during our Friday free choice on the Chromebooks. Well, free choice. <laughs> not really free choice, but kind of. Um, so I was telling them, hey, if you don't get that done, like, you're going to have to be doing that during our Friday free choice. And then since yesterday, well, I guess for you guys now it would be a week ago, but um, Sunday was Earth Day, so... It was so much fun. I brought the kids outside. It's one of our like really first nice days. And I said they could have the option of either picking up trash and I brought out gloves for them and everything, or they could just play an organized game. In math, this was our last day of MCA tests, yay! Um, and actually the computer lab teacher helped lady um said that we didn't have to be or that I didn't have to be in there and the kids who finished didn't have to be in there so we came back and we played a math game called sparkle which is where you can well some like in younger grades you'll be like one two three four but here we just did skip counting so we skip counted by four and then we skip counted by nine and then you have like a magic number and then um the kid who says that the kid after says sparkle and then they have to sit down. So it's a really good way to learn um, those skip countings or just counting in general. It's really fun and you kind of just keep that same pattern. So with the nines, we just count the same thing, 9, 18, 27, 36. 
45, 54, and then 54 was our magic number. So the kid after 54 would sit down. So that was really fun. And then, um, then we, I don't know, we just had a good day. And then I'm still reading the Westing game and everything like that. So it was a really nice day um, just to kind of like relax a little bit and be able to play some things and do some fun things outside and things like that. So I wanted to show you guys quick my morning message for tomorrow and then um, I'll just catch you guys then tomorrow. <laughs> so like I, th I think I explained a little while ago but basically um, the kids are doing a writing assignment as their final project for this human body um, unit and so they have to present some kind of writing piece and it has to be like, it can be a story, it can be a poem, it could be a rap, um, anything like that. So I'm trying to help them generate ideas of kind of what would a song look like. At least that's the one I'm doing today. So I said, good morning, lovely singers. And then I found an example online. I kind of changed up some of the verses myself, but this first part is kind of similar to what they did and to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'm going to talk about how maybe I could change it up to make it better and I'll have to keep editing. And then I asked them what is a word related or rhyming with bright that we could use to make another verse. So I think that'll be a good example for them to kind of start thinking more about their writing and I put it from the perspective of the brain. So I said, I am a brainy brain. And um, so that can kind of help them generate some ideas for their own writing projects as we get closer and closer to needing to write that. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow. See you then. Happy Wednesday. I am currently planning an activity for an outdoor math time. <laughs> so like I explained on Monday, it has been really, really nice weather the last few days, especially compared to the last few weeks when it was snowing. Um, so weather in the 60s is amazing and we have just been having so much fun with having that warm weather and I wanted to plan an outdoor math because my kids have been squirrely and um, I think it's just going to be really, really fun, especially at the end of the day and all of that. So let me show you guys what I have in mind. So this is the quick worksheet that I just typed up and I just said math activities and I just have seven of them. So I'm just going to talk about them a little bit, just kind of show you what I made. I just quick made this. Um, I'm hoping it's enough space for them and gives enough direction and information, I'm hoping. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like and kind of what I am planning to do with them. So I'll show you the materials and talk a little bit more about it. So you can pause and read over what I wrote, but basically um, I'm just going to tell you guys what I wrote and kind of show you those materials. So precursor, I went to the gym teacher and I kind of had some ideas ahead of time. Um, but I wanted, at first I wanted six activities and I could only think of five. And I was like, who would know this? So I was like, oh my gosh, the gym teacher would know what to do and kind of fun activities. So I went to him and I was like, what can I do with my kids? What would be fun? All that stuff. So um, all of these are borrowed from the gym teacher. So I have this lovely bag and these are called Kush Balls. And I said, using a Kush Ball, throw it back and forth with a partner and count in time how long you can keep the ball up between the two of you. See if you can pr improve each time. So then on the worksheet, I just have like the attempt and I wrote seconds, I wrote a line, seconds, and then a line and throws. So they're just going to throw this little ball. These probably look familiar. And he said these are fun and the kids like them. So that's called a cush ball. Or at least that's what he called them. And then um, one of them I don't have materials for, but I'm just going to put a little square of grass or a little square of tape. And I just said estimate the, no the bl number of blades of grass in that piece of, in that um, square of tape. And then 
um, multiplying that out, how many, like imagine if there were 600 squares of these over this field, how many blades of grass would be covering this field, basically. And then I said, use a timer. This is what their timers look like. They're very simple to use and they have a little thing that can go around the kid's neck. And um, it just looks like that. And it's just a start, stop, oops. And then they can restart it pushing that other button. So they're pretty simple to use and I am excited that I have those. Um, and so they're, these are going to be used for two different activities. So one is um, using a partner. One's partner is going to time, and then they're just going to use a jump rope. So I have jump ropes here, and they're going to see how many jumps they can get in a minute. And then they're going to use that information to see how many jumps they could get if they're going if they're going the same rate. How many they could get in one year, and then how many they could get in five years. I also have this big thing of cones and I'm just going to put a different cone at each spot and then um, cones around the whole thing to mark off kind of where our boundaries are. The next one, oh, this one's an easy one. I just said write down five objects and, that have an angle and then what angle that is at. And um, the other thing I'm going to do that also requires the timers is I'm just gonna put some paper out there and the kids can make a little paper airplane and they're going to throw it and see how long it stays in the air. So they're going to time how long. The next one is, he gave me this big awesome dice and they're just going to use the dice. They can throw them on the ground and then fill in the number that they get on the worksheet. I just gave a little equation. They fill in the numbers for the equation. And the last one, he said, these are new, something that they haven't used before, and I'll probably have to sit down and explain all of this stuff to the kids, which is fine. I'm really excited. And basically, they, I'm kind of mixed because I don't know how well the kids might be able to use these, but it's just the reality of being a teacher is that sometimes other teachers come in to chat with you, um, so that's what just happened. But um, anyways, the last thing is these little balls and cups. Um, you've probably seen them like smaller, but basically the thought here is um, how many times either, or how they have to time how long it would take them to get it in the cup or timing how many times they can get it in the cup, say in a minute. And then I just said for them to record their best time below um, if there's any students who can't handle it, I printed a little worksheet that says multi-step word problems, um, and they can just do that instead if they can't handle it, or if just things throughout the day aren't going very well with that student. Um, I've been talking to you guys a little bit about classroom management, and I think one of the biggest reasons I didn't talk yesterday was because I just felt like it did not go very well. It was kind of one of those days that I left and I was like, like, it was kind of one of those where I'm just like, am I cut out for this? Is fourth grade just too old for me? Am I just like too young or I don't know, or just going back to the whole, like, I know people tell you, like, it's hard to compare yourself to the classroom teacher who's had time to build relationships and do those different things with the kids. And I'm a sub. We always like we constantly talk about how the other teacher is going to be coming back and maybe that's why they feel they can be disrespectful. I don't know. Um, it was just a lot of disrespect and it's it's still coming from like the traditionally like kids who have a hard time following directions and stuff, but it's also coming from kids who typically do their job and at the beginning weren't really being talkative and now feel like it's okay to be talkative. So I think um, this morning I watched a little thing on Facebook and it kind of changed my mindset a little bit. And I was kind of like, okay, um, I'm just gonna move this, hold on, sorry. Um, I was just kind of like, I need to change the language that I'm using because in basically in this video they were talking about like, you shouldn't use good um, good boy with boys and kind of how damaging that can be and it kind of went on to say 
about how in like the workplace, if your boss comes up to you and says, like wants to congratulate you and notices the effort that you've been putting into your work, then like that means so much. But if your boss say comes up to you and just like brings you down, tells you everything you're bad at, like humiliates you in front of your coworkers, like you're not going to feel like wanted. You're not going to feel um, happy in that job and different things like that. So I was like, I need to go through and just like change my mindset about how I am speaking to students. And so I wanna focus more on the positives. And so today I've been trying that where I'm just like, oh, I notice, you know, five students doing their job. Thank you so much. Or I had to talk to some girls in the hall and I was like, wow, I noticed these four people were working really, really hard. And just expressing to students how grateful I am for that effort that they're putting in to kind of not necessarily go above and beyond, but I've been kind of calling it going above and beyond. And just, again, like changing how I'm talking about these things. So that's going to be my goal for the remainder of this week. Um, and I'm hoping that it kind of helps things a little bit. Something that was kind of fun and going back to that song that I wrote the other day, I think I showed you guys that, <laughs> um, but I wrote a song and I wrote this rap. Um, I kind of used a little bit of resources outside of my own brain to kind of help me out, but it was really fun. Some kids really, really enjoyed this and it just showed a different side of kind of school and kind of how things can be. And again, just a good example for what they should expect when they're doing their own writing. So I'm really excited. I think this is ramping them up to be really excited for this project. And I'm hopeful that, you know, they kind of see that this can be really fun and they can kind of challenge themselves. So I'm excited to see kind of what they come up with. <sighs> All right, guys. <laughs> Um, it's the end of Thursday, almost there. Woo. Um, so I wanted to talk about kind of how the last two days have been. Um, I told you guys I was doing the act outdoor activities. I showed you all the fun ones that I had. And I just wanted to kind of circle back around to that um, and just kind of talk about how it went and um, just kind of what I thought about it. So... Um, to be honest, my expectations going into it that were that I wanted to make it math related, but if like my main focus though was to get outside. And so even though some of the kids didn't get stuff, like some didn't even get anything written down, some only stayed at one station and it wasn't even like a math station, um, at the end of the day, like, I was okay with that <laughs> because my main expectation going into it was just getting outside and so to be honest they met my expectations like we got outside and they got to be active and goodness gracious <laughs> and so that yeah that was just my main expectation is just getting outside and being able to just have that experience outside and being able to still relate it to math so that was kind of my expectation. Um, like I said, there were some that didn't get anything done, barely got through one station that I put up, um, the ones I explained to you guys. And I think I could have organized it better. I think that was a little bit of on my part of just like not being super organized with that. But I mean, you, you live and you learn, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then of course I had the ones that like tried super, super hard and like want to do really good. And I feel like anytime you do stuff in school, like you're always going to have those ones that are super into it and everything. So um, for them, it went really well. It was kind of good differentiation um, in that regard. But it was, we did hit a speed bump in the fact that we only had 10 timers and like three of my stations needed timers. So um, it turned out that I was just like, one of the stations I was like, nope, just count the number of throws that you do. And then like, don't worry about the timing. Um, but then, so we only had 10 and three of them broke. So then we only had seven 
and um, I don't know it just it just didn't go very well in, in that regard with the timers and then people are kind of thrown off because they didn't know what to do and so things could have been made a little bit clearer but at the end of the day like we had fun it was fine <laughs> um, I also started hold on I'm gonna go get them quick So there are these call and response cards. I just found some free ones on TPT. Uh, these say at the bottom, Minds That Matter Inc. And yeah, it's just little things like cues that you can use. So I would say fired up and then the kids would say ready to go. So we've just been choosing a new one um, each day. I'm not the best at using them. I think they're kind of fun and they really do get the kids attention really, really well, but I just need to find better ways to like remember to use them that's kind of my like my problem is that I just forget to use them and most of the time I just like five four three two one and I kind of forget about that so I need to get better at working on using the call and response cards um, and then I can't remember if I talked about this but I decided I was going to change the way I was talking to my students and just really focus on being more positive with my language and really working with those students that typically have a tough time and just really trying to encourage them a lot. And with my tough, I guess, student in my class, I've really, really, really been working hard to give encouragement and just make make a positive experience for that student and so I've been trying really really hard um, sometimes it, it is hard though because like they do something that is not okay and it's hard to like stay on that positive route when that happens so I just have to keep really really trying to keep things positive with that student and with the whole class too, I mean, it's I, like it's so easy to just get down and just be like, oh, like you guys are the worst. Like, why are you doing that? Not the worst, obviously, <laughs> but like, why are you guys doing this? Like, I don't know. And I just want to have better language with like encouraging um, rather than discouraging. So, you know, pointing out the positives rather than the negatives. And I've really, really been trying to work on that. I think I did better yesterday than I did today. Um, there were a few things that went on today that just made it really difficult um especially at the end of the day i just had like i i had to yell not that you should ever yell but like um not yelling as in like upset or angry just yelling as in like i had to get kids attention and i just had to ask them all to sit down um we had some students that were unhappy that they had to clean as opposed to some other students that had to clean so they were kind of being defiant towards that and just like not cleaning and so our classroom was a mess and I told everybody to come in and help to clean it and it was really disappointing because the kids left on kind of a negative note at the end of the day where I like I was telling them that they like that it's not very respectful that they weren't helping to clean that we needed to go back in and clean and you know that they have jobs that they do every single day and the fact that I had to even give them reminders was kind of ridiculous but you know they're 10 years old and I have to keep that in my mind but so that was just hard um leaving on a very negative note where it was just like go clean up the classroom and then it was like okay we gotta go like go line up Okay, goodbye see you tomorrow and for me I just I don't like that I don't like leaving on a negative note and unfortunately they did so I just have to work really hard tomorrow I think to make it a positive day which I think it will be um, so yeah otherwise I'm just gonna keep working on that language and just really 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 trying to um, improve the way that I am seeing a situation and um, reacting to a situation. So I'm going to end there because I was talking for a really long time. Um, but yeah, I think um, tomorrow I'm working the carnival at the school 
and um, I'm gonna finish that I think with I think I'm gonna go for the week um, just because tomorrow there's not really anything interesting and um, I don't know I guess I don't know <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna go for the week because it, I just want to be able to like have my Friday go to the carnival do all that stuff and I will catch you guys next week. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I hope you enjoyed the outdoor math and I hope you can get your kids outdoor, outdoor, outside. Um, I love to do it and it's a big passion of mine to like get outside and stuff. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you next week. Bye guys. <laughs>